A judge approves a deal that will lower the number of certified signatures needed to trigger a recall election for Mayor LaToya Cantrell. Tonight, we take a look at the records that push the Secretary of State's office and recall organizers to a settlement. According to exhibits submitted to the court as part of the lawsuit trying to reduce the number of voters needed to recall the mayor, the Cantrell recall attorneys say they have as many as 31,064 addresses of people who shouldn't be active voters. That includes 544 the recall attorneys reported as deceased, 9,084 who submitted change of address information to the U.S. Postal Service moving out of Orleans Parish, and 21,400 36, who their data shows is submitting change of address information moving out of state. The recall organizers used a national company, Peachtree Data, which specializes in address validation. And that data does indicate some people in the voting rolls have been gone for quite some time. According to the Secretary of State, a voter named Kim, we're not identifying her last name, is an active voter in Orleans Parish. But the recall exhibit shows she last voted in Orleans in 1985. The records show the 63-year-old woman moved to San Francisco in 1997, but she's remained an active voter in Orleans Parish. Another example, Christopher, who last voted before Katrina in 2004 and put in a change of a dress move in 2013 to Brentwood, California. Secretary of State records show he is also an active voter. The exhibits also include an obituary of a Miss Emily. Again, we're withholding her last name. She'd be 116 today. Secretary of State records show she's an active voter, even though her obituary shows she died in March of 2006. The exhibits also include signed recall petitions where it was noted some members of the household had had moved out of state, this example to Florida. Jeffrey, whose last name we're withholding, is an active voter in Orleans Parish, but his family noted he moved to Florida, and we've confirmed through online searches that he lives in Jacksonville. While these examples do raise questions, it would be impossible for anyone to verify 25,000 voters in a short period of time. How are voters in Orleans Parish supposed to have confidence in, in the, the number here in the recall petition as far as what the number is they need to reach when, when they're changing the number they need to reach, you know, within days of the signatures needing to be verified? Well, I think what the confidence level is, is that obviously the petitioners brought enough data uh, for us to have to look into this. They filed a lawsuit. Um, and I think bottom line is we settled in order to make sure that one, um, we're given a fair number because there are some issues. I've said now for two years uh, in asking the legislature who agreed with me to pass legislation for a second annual canvas to pass additional legislation to get more data from death certificates from the Department of Health. Um, all those things combined, but yet the governor vetoed it. I think if we had had the second annual canvas back in 2021, I think we would have had uh, more accurate roles than, than, than today. The canvassing the Secretary of State is talking about is an annual mailer that goes to residents asking them if they still live at a current address. Well, those canvases are done uh, very broadly. It's a, a mass mailing for each parish. Um, and then those cards have to be returned to the registrar of voters. So what happens now is that if the, if the people who are at the address and this person doesn't live there, then if they don't return the cards to the registrar of voters, which means just send it back through the mail, and supposing that the mail system is um, doing its job, um, then the registrar would act upon those cards. But most people end up throwing those cards in the garbage thinking it's junk mail. Ardwin says the last mailer in May returned between 15 to 17,000 active voters who should be inactive or removed from the rolls. Ardwin says the number from last year gives him confidence the 25,000 voter figure agreed upon is fair. How did you come up, or both sides come up with 25,000? Why not? 30, why not 10, why not none, why 25,000? 
because the um, so the last canvas was a, a little around between fifteen and seventeen thousand. I don't remember the number exactly. So we took that as our baseline, and then we we estimated what the second annual canvas would provide, um, and then we added that to it, and it got us close to between twenty three and twenty four. Um, the other side wanted a higher number, uh, and I told them I would only I wouldn't go beyond the twenty five thousand. There are people who move from. Louisiana in the early 2000s, 90s, people who've been deceased since, you know, around Katrina who were still active voters. Um, how did that happen? Well, the registrar has to, to work the, inf the data and the information that we provide from all of these reporting agencies. Um, if that's not done, then, then that's how mistakes are made. There are also, there's federal laws that we have to uh, abide by and sometimes you have to have an exact uh, well not sometimes you have to have an exact match and if there's some data set missing uh, then the registrar has to err on the side of caution and not remove that person in our interview ardwin emphasized the twenty-five thousand reduction of voters does not mean they will be removed from the rolls and they will remain active voters the only thing today's agreement impacts is the cantrell recall number Nobody's status is changing whatsoever. Uh, so this is just a number, um, the same you know, uh, type of process that I would have gone through um, uh, in August when we came up with the original number and now we're just 25,000 less than that. We are going to go through um, the information and the data that the petitioners uh, have. They're gonna turn it over to us uh, and uh, my elections division and my elections compliance unit investigators are gonna go through that we're going to do a deep dive and an examination of that information and we're going to produce a report for the registrar, uh, also for legislative leadership and then for also the New Orleans City Council. What um, you said no one's getting moved. What, it, what was the exact wording you used there? No one's getting moved or changed? No one is being moved from active to inactive. No one's being removed from the voter list either. It's just a number by which we're basing the uh, recall effort on. Okay, so so even like, you know, there's allegedly 500 or so deceased people, even them will not be removed right now from the voting rolls. It's just a, a calculation issue for the recall and that's it? That's it. It's just a calculation re, uh, for the recall. Uh, and then once we do a full examination of the information that the petitioners have put forth, um, then we then uh, we'll make a report to the, the registrar for her to then act upon what we find. Um, those that are deceased, remove them. Arduin is unsure if the legal battle will now end or if the mayor plans some type of legal action. Are you concerned about uh, Mayor Cantrell, um, you know, challenging this? I mean, she has the opportunity. She obviously had the opportunity to intervene in this case and chose not to. My guess is, you know, she's got um, some plans laid out and we'll see how things unfold. Uh, but I think what we've done is do, due diligence and provided a service to the, the people of Orleans. Uh, we'll see if the certification brings the numbers and, and then see what unfolds from there. Um, but I think a, a long drawn out case, I think, would have been a disservice to the people of Orleans. The attorneys for the recall organizers, Laura Rodrigue and Blake Curie, believe the number of voters who have moved from New Orleans is likely significantly higher than the 31,000 alleged in their petition. This afternoon, the mayor said the recall effort is an effort to disenfranchise voters. A voting rights group and state representative Mandy Landry say they have concerns about the recently approved agreement. It's evident uh, that this recall is, is just not about me. Uh, it is about... Uh, disenfranchisement uh, of our voters, uh, particularly black voters in this community. I'm glad that they're not pulling anyone off today, but I think that's a concern for the future. We certainly are, you know, in several conversations, and I think that there will be a lawsuit that does come from the, you know, the, these arguments. Anybody can sue for many issues. But one thing is abundantly clear. The mayor's allegations that voters were disenfranchised is absolutely not true. That's the one thing the Secretary of State made sure of and made clear. 
The Orleans Registrar of Voters Office is now certifying the signatures on the recall petition. Recall organizers now need just, just under 45,000 signatures. The Registrar of Voters Office has until March 22nd to finish the verification process. Newly released body camera and surveillance video shows a man holding a Jefferson Parish deputy in a headlock, pointing a gun to his head. Deputies then shot and killed the suspect. Maddie Kurth has the timeline of the shooting that started as a call for service for a pair of flat tires. Put it down! Stop. Put it down! New video shows the moments before two Jefferson Parish Sheriff's deputies shot and killed Kevin Veal at a brother's food mart in Terrytown early Saturday morning. We could be planning the funeral of heroes today uh, for several odd deputies there on the scene, and, and luckily we're not. Sheriff Joe Lapinto says it started out as a series of 911 hang ups. Sir? 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 A combination of body camera and surveillance video shows Veal pull up to the convenience store with two flat tires. Lapinto says his deputies were calling him a tow truck when his behavior turned erratic. I feel like I'm trying to be, like I'm being no. kidnapped. Lapinto said his deputies didn't know the man had a concealed gun. While struggling with deputies trying to put him into handcuffs to remove him from the store, the man is seen putting a deputy into a headlock, pointing a gun to his head and then running to the bathroom. They don't choose their next call for service. None of them knew where they were going. To them, it was a 911 hang up at the Brothers Food Mart, which is something they handle every single day, every single night. Uh, and, and this is a situation that they had to encounter. Fox 8 legal analyst Joe Responti says what happened next was clear from the moment the gun was pointed at deputies. It doesn't matter what happened before the camera was turned on or outside the frame. Those guys showed restraint. But once you point a gun at a deputy's head, you should expect to be shot. Veal is seen on surveillance camera peeking out from the bathroom. Put it down. Backup deputies come into the store to help and screams can be heard as they try to reason with the suspect. Please, please drop the gun. Ultimately, the sheriff says 16 rounds were fired by deputies, one from Kevin Veal. That moment caught on camera but will not be released by the sheriff's office until the investigation becomes public record. Initial toxicology reports show the presence of THC, methamphetamines and amphetamines in Veal's system at the time of the shooting. Sheriff Lapinto says the deputies involved are back on the job. The parish coroner confirmed Veal's family had the right to hire a physician to sit in on the autopsy, but opted out. Meg Lee, back to you. All right, Maddie, one of the uh, state's newest coastal projects is right in New Orleans' backyard. Tonight in a special Coast in Crisis report, John Snell tells us it's designed to help knock down hurricane storm surge. Near the easternmost part of New Orleans, a pipe spits out new land. This new marsh along Highway 90 near the Rigolis traveled 5,000 feet through the dredge pipe. Michaela Connor is the project manager for the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority. And this material is being pumped from a borrow area in Lake St. Catherine and piped and uh, placed in this marsh creation area here. The project aims to shore up the New Orleans Land Bridge, a sliver of real estate that stretches from roughly Chef Pass to the Rigolese. The $25 million in funding flows from a federal and state task force in charge of a pot of money set aside for coastal projects. Mostly this marsh was affected by tropical storms and hurricanes. That's how we've lost a lot of marsh in this area. Hurricane Katrina alone shredded 70 acres along the land bridge. The marsh here is also sinking, evidenced by Fort Pike, a piece of 19th century history that sits nearby, now crumbling and mostly encircled by water. The notion of saving the coast might seem a bit remote at times in New Orleans. After all, the average project might be an hour, three hours drive from the CBD. This coastal restoration effort brings the concept home. 
The land bridge, which Highway 90 sits on, is all that separates Lakes Catherine and Pontchartrain. So without the integrity of these lake forms, if it were to open up, it would become open water. If the lakes were to merge, that would raise the storm surge threat in New Orleans and other communities that ring Lake Pontchartrain. This newly created land is going to serve as a buffer, right? So when tropical storms and hurricanes come along, uh, this land that maybe you don't see every day, it helps protect us. The dredge pipe draws a number of birds hoping for a midday snack. It means new habitat in the Bayou Sauvage National Wildlife Refuge. It's important that we protect the habitats along with the species because the species do need the habitats. They're also installing some features aimed at giving the project lasting power. Concrete mats protect the shoreline. And that's really going to do a lot to keep the interior marsh from eroding further. A place that has been rapidly disappearing now features the newest land in New Orleans. It's beautiful, isn't it? John Snell, Fox 8 Local First. Only one company can sell food from carts in the French Quarter, but how much they pay for that right left some other vendors shocked. A political analyst says the exclusive deal and the fees associated with it are both frozen in time.